Testing, testing. Okay, it seems to work. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is KJ Aiello. I am a soon to be traditionally published author. I am also a freelance writer. 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 Okay, let's start this again. I am also a freelance writer. I did it again. <laughs> I am also a freelance writer and occasionally an editor. I play video games and I read fantasy stuff. My whole world revolves around fantasy. And I realize I have actually not had a chance to formally introduce myself. So this is my, consider it my coming out ball, my coming of age, my moment to discover myself on author tube and book tube. And I'm really excited to be here because I have been hanging around this space lurking for a few years now. And I really haven't, you know, joined the party and I'm kind of jealous. Like I've had FOMO for a long time. So here we are. We're going to go down a list of questions here uh, just to kind of get a sense of who I am. And hopefully I hear from you guys. I would love to know what you think, what you're up to. Um, tips and tricks would be really, really great too, because even for, for professional writers, this is like so hard. So let's get started. I think I was probably in like a really low moment where I was working on my trilogy, which I'm still working on my trilogy. This was years ago. And I just started Googling like publishing odds and publishing tips and tricks and, you know, writing novels. And I came across Alexa Dunn, who is a traditionally published author, as well as I Writerly with Meg Latour. And she used to work at a literary agency and is now an indie published author. And it's just like, these women have so many good things to say. This is just like the space I want to be in. And I constantly, I was watching their videos and I was just taking notes the whole time. I think this was like, I don't know, 2018, maybe late 2017 or early 2018. So it's been a few years and they're still going. I hear that Meg has just recently smashed the 100,000 subscribers on her YouTube channel. So that's, that's really awesome. That's kind of how I came across it. And I kind of abandoned it, particularly over the pandemic because writing was hard. And I was also working on my own book at the time. So I had a book contract. And I was like, okay, I can't be listening to what other people have to say about writing because they just, it's going to stop me from writing. So I just didn't, I didn't listen to any advice at all, which I think my editor is probably like, maybe you should have. So this is the weird thing. And I have a lot, I feel like I should make like a whole episode on why we should not be, you know, pigeonholed into one genre. So my debut book is actually nonfiction, but it deals with fantasy. It's basically how, how I understand mental illness and, you know, air quotes, abnormal behaviors through the fantasy genre. And that's like films, TV, books, games, that sort of thing. So that's like nonfiction, but fantasy-esque. But I also have, I have four completed drafts of novels, of fantasy novels, sitting in my laptop going like, why are you not paying attention to me? Meanwhile, I'm writing another three. <laughs> and they're all fantasy. So that's me. Mixed genre, I guess. I really don't have an issue with too many tropes. I think it really just depends on the genres that the trope, like I love the spicy fantasy romance novels that are out the fantasy novels with romantic elements. Like I really love Cassandra Clare. I'm... I will buy Sarah J. Mass novels. Like I love Rebecca Yaros's Fourth Wing. I read it twice in one month. I really love the enemy enemies to lovers. Um, not a fan of Forks Pro Forest Proximity. The Chosen One. I find I like it when it's done right. I feel like the Chosen One really is kind of like you're falling into the Deus Ex Machina kind of rabbit hole. Like so that that one's kind of like. I don't know. The themes I really love is like disability and mental illness, particularly. I love a character who's unpacking, you know, trauma, who, you know, lives with anxiety or depression or, you know, bipolar disorder, or schizophrenia. One of my characters right now, she lives with uh, PTSD and schizophrenia and it's a liminal fantasy. I love when characters like that are represented as the main characters in fantasy novels because let's be real it's not been that way for a long long time the mentally ill character was always the evil one let's change that shall we so if you're in like Barnes and Noble or Indigo or I think in the UK it's Waterstones, where would my book be? I mean, preferably on the very front table with like trending on book talk and hot sellers and New York Times bestsellers. Let's the question answers itself. <laughs> but it would probably be in the memoir section, hopefully like trending because um, it's kind of like it's a a completely different take on fantasy and memoir it blends the two together which is like I was really excited about it I know my editor was like oh this is so good so I feel like that's where I want it to be but I also the dream is 
sitting in a coffee shop or riding the subway, which I probably will never do because I live with agoraphobia, but let's dream here for a second and just be like, I'm there and I look up and I see someone is reading and I look at the cover and it's my book. <laughs> I think that's like, that's it. That would be just like randomly somebody's reading my book. I would love that. Even better if they're annotating, like mess that book up. I will send you sticky notes and pens. Okay. I won't send them to everybody though, but like first 10 people, I don't know. Let's see how it goes. Am I a plotter, pantser, or a planter? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like at this point in my career, I mean, I am going to be a debut author, but I've written so many books at this point. It's just like, it depends on the, the project. My nonfiction book, I sold it on proposal, meaning that I wrote the proposal and I sent that with a submission letter, uh, the writing sample to the acquisitions editor. But so, but that one was very much plotted out. And I think that a lot of nonfiction, you have to anyways, because a lot of nonfiction is sold on proposal rather than completing the entire manuscript and then polishing it and querying it or putting it out on submission. But I think for my novels, planter. I think like I am like 90% of the writing population. I'm a planter, sometimes leaning more to the pantser section, which is kind of weird because I love lists and organization and categories, but I'm a planter. In my head in the shower. <laughs> I joke, but it's not. It's true. I have a couple of places. I need to spice it up. I'm the kind of person who if I stay, you know, if it's too consistent, I'll get bored and then I get miserable and then I get depressed and then it's just no good. I have this space here, which I have like, I love what I've done here. So this is really great because I actually don't hear a lot of what's going on in the house. Put on my noise canceling headphones. I feel like I'm, I'm in like my little cave here and I feel like I can just focus. I love, love writing in bed. First thing in the morning, coffee in hand, writing. And I have a desk upstairs too. I used to write in coffee shops, but not anymore. I mean, obviously the pandemic kind of put a, a damper on that, but I'm at the age now where I, I can't go on a long road trip without plotting out places where I can use the restroom. So if you're in a coffee shop and you're on your own, first thing I'm gonna think about is when do I need to pee? And then because of that, I'll need to pee. But then in order to do that, I gotta pack up all my crap take it to the washroom or somebody's gonna walk off with it. And then I come back, unpack everything, you know, hopefully I'll still have a seat. So yeah, that sucks. <laughs> I read voraciously. I inhale fantasy novels like it's my last gasp of oxygen. I also really love memoirs and nonfiction. I love nonfiction that's, you know, premised around political issues, social issues, because it kind of, it translates quite a bit into the fantasy world so that I write. I write generally urban fantasy, but one of my books is starting to like go into another world, which is weird. I was not expecting that. See previous comment about Planter. The question again? <laughs> I also get my inspiration from playing open world RPGs, role playing games, tabletop RPGs, or like virtual tabletop RPGs like Pathfinder, Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, I'm a nerd. I know. Own it. I also really love like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. <laughs> That game, so I did a video on that before and I'll link it below, but that game came into my life at the perfect time. It was February, 2021. We we're in like the dark days of winter and the pandemic. We were still in lockdown. Things were not looking good. I missed traveling so much. That's another place I get inspiration. And I was like, I haven't played video games since I was a kid, but screw it, I'm buying an Xbox. And I don't know why I decided on an Xbox. I think it was because it was cheaper than the PS5. Plus I could actually get it like, the next day with Amazon, whereas with the PS5, I would have to wait like 12 weeks because apparently they're a hot commodity. So I did and I was like, ah, you know what? I saw the game Odyssey and I'm like, I love ancient Greek mythology. I love the idea of being an assassin. Like, come on, it's like everyone's dream. Maybe not everyone, maybe there's something wrong with me. So I started playing it and it really, like it didn't necessarily pull me out of depressive episode and it was really bad, but what it did was help me ride through it. And I started to feel inspired Inspired. The game visually, the game is absolutely gorgeous. And there's a pretty good narrative arc to it as well, which I also talked about in my other video. Not that I'm promoting myself. I'm totally promoting myself. But yeah, that game, like the more hours I, I was playing it, the more I started to feel like, oh, Oh, you know, like this is really cool. I got that, the, you know, the effervescence of like creativity starting to bubble up in me. And I was thinking about other worlds and characters. Well, I mean, I'm going to be traditionally published with it's a publishing house called ECW Press. They're based here in Canada. They're one of the largest um, small publishers and I'm air quoting small here because they're not a big five. 
right? They're not like McMillan, um, HarperCollins, PRH. So anybody else is like a small publisher, even though my publisher is a big publisher. So I feel like it's kind of like a dream publisher anyways. And the editor I'm working with, Jen Su Fang Lee, she's just like, she's so good. She is, she's, and she's such a nice human. Like she's such a good human. So I kind of feel like I have a dream. I mean, for subsequent novels, I feel like maybe I would love to get picked up by like Bloomsbury. If you're watching any acquiring editors at Bloomsbury, I'm right here. Contact at kjilo.ca. Feel free to drop me a line. I used to have an agent and I actually left them. Uh, and it was my decision to do that because it wasn't a great experience. So I'm a little hesitant right now. And I know there are some phenomenal agents out there. I follow some on threads and Instagram and some of them follow me on threads and Instagram. And I, you know, I'm kind of like in that space. So I know who is amazing. I don't know who could represent me. I don't know who I could collaborate with. And I'm, it's not to say that like I'm unique or special or anything like that. I'm just saying that I'm being careful because I want both me and whoever my agent will be in the future to have a really positive, fruitful money-making experience together because I would love to work with them throughout the majority of my career, my writing career. So it has to be a really good fit. So I don't know. I do know that of quite a few amazing agents out there, but they also don't represent fantasy. So, I mean, if they ever do represent fantasy, I'll be knocking on their door. <laughs> but, you know, there's no dream one. There are a lot of dream agents out there, but I don't know for me yet. We'll see. I will let you know. <laughs> Well, definitely ones like this, me talking about writing and inspiration of writing. I also am a co-host of the podcast, Why We Write Fantasy. There's a channel here also on YouTube. So I'm going to drop that link below because we talk about my friend Oscar Sasenia and I talk a lot about fantasy writing in particular. And he and I both come from completely different backgrounds and we have different jobs. I am a professional writer. He is actually works in, I don't really know what he does. <laughs> He's a really good writer. So what you can expect here though, is like, like a kind of a melting pot of a bunch of things. I am like your buffet for fantasy. So I'll be talking about my writing, my writing process, some of my opinions on books coming out or have come out. I'd love to get my my hands on some arcs of some fantasy novels. I've written, you know, book reviews for places like the Globe and Mail here in Canada, video games. Like I love games like and tabletop RPGs or virtual tabletop RPGs, things like that. So anything really that's fantasy-esque and like drawing too. Like you can see <laughs> I was pulling out some old drawings. So like art, things like that too. So anything that's based around fantasy is going to be over here, but a lot of writing related stuff. So if I'm talking about a video game, I'm going to be talking about it from a writer's perspective, as I did with my ACO video, which I will again drop down, down below. I, I was a kid. I was, I was a kid. I was like, I don't know, maybe like nine or 10 years old. And I was reading these novels from the Dragonlance series and you know, shout out if anybody, let me know if you remember the Dragonlance novels. Like, so I used to write fan fiction based on those when I was just, I was a, I was a win. Um, kind of in my teenage years, let that slide. I took a creative writing class in high school and I think that that was my, my last gasp at creative writing. And it was such a beautiful class. I loved it so much. But after that, things just kind of went south for me. I became really mentally ill, very unstable in university and, Life was not great for like two decades. And then in my mid thirties, I started to really feel it again. I said to my husband one day, I'm like, I feel like I just want to write. Like, this is what I want to do. Writing seriously. And him, you know, bless his little socks. He's like, okay. <laughs> not even thinking that, you know, maybe this might not be the most practical thing, but here we are. Okay. So I feel like I'm going to do a whole video based on this. I have a couple of things. First of all, is Scrivener. Scrivener is magic. When I discovered Scrivener, I was like, where, where has this been my entire life? Everything goes into Scrivener. It's so amazing because I can organize everything. I can color code everything. I use the dark setting because I feel like the light one is just like on my eyes. And it's, it's so great because I can see, like for somebody who doesn't really plot, I'm able to see I can start to see a path forward with Scrivener, which is really great. No, notebooks. Here we go. This is my favorite notebook, 
Moleskine. I prefer the soft cover, but they tend to not make them quite as much anymore. But Moleskine, large or extra large, lined. This is like, they're, these are hella expensive. It's like ridiculous. But I have, I have filled up probably a dozen of these in the last few years. Necessary. Brain dump goes into this. Muji pen. Have to have Muji pen. Has to be a 0.7. <laughs> can't be a 0.5 it has to be the 0.7 and it has to be the dark blue it's like an indigo blue so when I get my hands on these I just like I buy them all I do love to travel but when I can't travel Google Earth Pro trust me on this and Google Street View if you ever are setting your scenes somewhere else in the world Google Earth Pro and Google Street View are a life save let's just like Wandering around Google Earth Pro is just like, it's so amazing. You can like see volcanoes, you can see fissures, you can see oceans, just it's, it's so cool. And you can see different perspectives, such great tools. Definitely go check them out. Google Earth Pro is so beautiful. I don't know. I make no mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes. I'm going based on the editing process right now with my book, with my editor. One of the things that I think has come up a lot where she's like, I'm not really sure what you're trying to say. So I think it's entirely clear in my head. So I'm assuming that the reader is in my head instead of, you know, basically laying it out for the reader. So I think that I need to be more explicit, basically. Now that, again, that was nonfiction. In fiction, not entirely sure yet. Yeah, one of my big writing mis mistakes way back in the day was assuming that I was an exception to the rule. Let me tell you, no one is an exception to the rule, except for the people behind me, <laughs> like good old SJM and Cassie Clare and Holly Black. But they still, like, like they follow a very prescriptive narrative in their book. So no one really is an exception to the rule. Don't ever assume that you're an exception. Just stick to the rules. And then once you're a millionaire, you can do what you want, right? Look at Stephen King's fairy tale, his last novel. He did whatever he wanted. Yeah. I do actually not like a hard schedule but I make my writing a priority in my day so like I said before I'm also a professional writer so I do a lot of uh, freelance content work I do some journalism I do some book reviews I also co-host the podcast and then I have my own social media going which is it's career oriented my social media I have a lot of things always juggling around my dream writing so my novels working on my book that always comes first and a minimum of 20 minutes every day, unless I'm like dog sick or something. I may write like 100 words or I may chop 100 words or something, but it keeps my head in the game. So I don't have to go back and be like, what the hell? Like they're doing like, they're doing what? I definitely, I mean, I can't wait to see my book cover. I have a whole Pinterest board that I've been putting together. It's secret, so you can't have it, that I've been putting together for like two years now. It's just kind of helped me get going or to keep going. And just this past week, I actually sent it to the um, the art director at my publishing house because we're going to start getting into that next process very, very soon. So that's like, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to see the final galley version that's like pre-print version, the final, the finalized cover, and then getting that box at my door. <laughs> Return address is my publisher with my 20 author copies. Like, I'm just gonna lose it. I will record it. It's just like, ah, oh, I can't wait. And I can't wait to see somebody reading it in public. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but maybe I'll force my friends to do that and I'll just like stumble across them in a park and be like, oh, I didn't know you are here. What are you reading? Oh, I haven't seen that book. Even though it was all staged. Whatever, who's gonna know? Are you gonna know? I'm not gonna fix this camera a little bit here. I love drawing, sketching, painting. It really helps with creativity and being able to visualize or it's just something that keeps that, you know, bubbling going. I'm talking it like it's a soup. It is a soup. I have my podcast. I, can't, I don't even know. Like my life is so entrenched in writing. You know, video games, uh, playing Pathfinder or D&D with my friends. 95% of my friends are also writers. So it's not even like I can say, oh, I hang out with my non-writer friends to like see what the real world is like. No, no, I do not. I only have writer friends. I don't know. Like everything is has got to do with writing in some way or creativity. I think I maybe no. Yes. No. Sort of. Travel. I love traveling and I don't think there's a lot of people who don't love traveling I mean there are but not that many yeah traveling my next trip I think is going to be Greece but it's I mean are you seeing a Greek theme here <laughs> 
book shopping count? Reading? No, it's all writerly adjacent. I really need to figure out something else to do with my life. Everything's got to do with writing. <sighs> okay, well, if you guys have any ideas of things that I can do that are not writing related, not cooking. I do not cook. Tell me, I apparently need to get out of my writing world. That was a lot of questions, but I'm really glad to be here. I'm glad you joined me. I feel like I've gotten to know myself a little bit more <laughs> and also some surprising revelations that I should probably address. Let me know what you think. I would love to hear what, you know, the answer to some of these questions, your answers, any great other author tube links, drop them in the comments. I really, really want to connect with other author tubers um, and book tubers because it's kind of like very, you know, the Venn diagram is a circle. Let's be real. I would love to hear from you and subscribe hit the bell like it comment whatever it is you want to do i would be eternally grateful it would help with my crumbling ego in this hard knock life publishing world anyways see you next time